The state of New Mexico gave us two acres to do any kind of experimental architecture we wanted to. They don't look like See, they're built into the earth. In New Mexico, we've put aside uh, hundreds of acres to test nuclear bombs. So Mike, the architect, went to the legislature in New Mexico and, and said, like, hey, let us experiment with housing. And they actually gave us uh, two acres to set aside to do whatever we want and experiment any way we want. So we're doing things that are not a, a normally accepted by counties and permitting and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely no restrictions. No restrictions. The county comes and just kind of observes once in a while. This is our uh, bottle making lab for the uh, academy because we have a school here where we teach students how to build airships and all our techniques. And this is where we cut bottles in half, then we tape them together and they make these beautiful little bricks that light comes through. Home Depot, you probably pay five bucks for a brick like that. So then we're gonna find a matching one, tape them together, and then it's a brick for free. And the county brings us bottles, the county brings us tires, the county brings us mulch. We use trash, we use whatever society is done with and we're gonna use it in housing. This is gonna be a huge complex where we can house students in the future. Mike wants to put a river through it. So yeah, we decided to make an outdoor amphitheater because sometimes we have 60 students here. Why tires? Oh, tires are just free and they're gigantic bricks and filled with dirt. They just make this incredible structure. So we use tires for everything we can. Tires are walls, tires are foundations, tires are footings. They are big, strong, free bricks. This whole structure has been made by students over the years, and it's just all made out of bottles, cans, and tires. So this is? This is going to be student housing. So this is going to be like an apartment? Yeah. And there's going to be 30-foot trees growing in here. I mean, hopefully we'll be, uh, you know, picking figs and oranges in here. Easy to build with bottles and cans, too. Cans are just a really low-tech, easy way to build walls and forms. You just lay the can in, you put a layer of cement in and lay the cans in, another layer, lay them in. And the cans are not the strength or insulation or anything. They just help establish the matrix of cement, which is uh, the strength. The alternative would be just a solid cement wall. So think of how much more cement you'd have to use if you didn't have these cans. Our county permitting lady, she came out just to do her walkthrough and she, just the way we built the stairs wouldn't be permitted, you know? And it's super strong. There's no reason it wouldn't be permitted, but it's just not in their way of thinking to permit a, a staircase like this. But uh, we're just able to, to go off in here and, and do what we know works. It looks Gaudian to me, like very... Yeah, to me it's like a church. These houses, these are called the Simple Survival Earthship. To get an Earthship permitted in the United States, it's got to be pretty expensive because a house has to do so many different things, right? This is what we're experimenting to really keep the price down. We have solar panels, but it's these cheaper kind of rollout solar panels. And the idea behind it is, in most third world situations, you basically need lights and you need to charge your computer and phone. <laughs> you see these black tanks in the window. So those just fill up every night and in the day they heat up all day and so by the end of the day you got piping hot water. Now it's not going to be as hot in the morning, it's not hundreds and hundreds of gallons of hot water, but this is the simple survival. This is what people need to survive. They got 15 gallons of hot water here. They got a little solar system that they can plug their stuff into. Hello? I think all the interns have cleared out, so if you want to see the inside. 
So like all airships nowadays, we have this greenhouse interaction zone. So this greenhouse is what can heat your house during the winter. You open up the doors to the room and the heat goes in. During the summer, you close these doors to keep the heat in here. And ever since we started isolating these greenhouses, we've really been able to control temperature. The old designs stayed between like 64, 74, but now our new designs are just straight line across the board, 71 degrees, without any outside heat or cooling. And we can see a cooling tube here. This is a pipe that goes through the earth that's buried the house. And so the greenhouse sucks the air out of here and it gets cooled by being going through all that mass. And this is kind of our little air conditioning here. Um, this is a, a vault. Underneath the adobe is a um, cage of rebar and metal lath. To build one of these ceilings is kind of low tech and easy and, and uh, in third world situations, we have lots of labor and so this house takes a lot of labor. And this is the kitchen? Yeah, simplified kitchen. I think it's, you know, the, the normal kitchen is such a huge expense and this is, we're trying to simplify all the systems. Well, and then look at this. This is our, what we call our digester. So you're, uh, after you take a shower, you're, the water is going to go through the system that we use water four times. But so the shower water goes into here, which is a worm box. So the water goes in there and the worms help treat the water and then it goes through into the gray water system afterwards. There's probably some worms in here somewhere. Oh, here's some worms. It goes from the shower into here and then it goes into your planter. Okay. We really cherish water and, you know, we only get like nine inches a year here, so we gotta, you know, save it and use it every way possible. This is a shower here, yeah. After the water goes through, you know, your shower, it comes through the box, goes through the plants. Whatever water isn't used, we store in a little well and it gets pumped into the toilet. So we use gray water in the toilet. So that's the third use of water. After the toilet, it goes outside to a self-contained black water containment cell. So that's the fourth use is exterior landscaping. So four uses of water here. Sixteen years ago, uh, when I came here, this community was shut down as an illegal subdivision, believe it or not. That was when some lawyer in town was fighting us, saying we were a legal subdivision and, and people went along with it. And we actually got shut down and people's lives got kind of shattered because of it. But then it seems like in the last 10 years, everything switched and they're realizing this is a positive thing. Let's not harass these people. Let's encourage them. Let's let them do their thing. This sort of feels futuristic. Yeah, well, my mom, who's uh, 74, she, she's always said, Mike, she's like, oh, that Mike Reynolds, she, he's just ahead of his time. She just always says, she's like, he's just too far ahead of his time. And that's my, you know, my conservative, wise mother. And she's right, he, you know, he's really been pushing it. So this is the global, Mike calls it the BMW of Earthships. This does everything any house in America does. I mean, this does it all. You know, you have plenty of power to do anything. It stays at a 70 degree temperature. It produces food, it collects water, makes hot water. It's just really streamlined, incredible. This is 40 years of research and uh, architecture from Mike to, that he came to this. I think he's pretty happy with his house. The, the main thing that really keeps our house is that stable temperature is thermal mass. So we have these massive tire walls and then we're buried with earth. That mass holds a steady temperature. <laughs> then we got the solar element. So in the winter, the sun shoots deep into the house, hits those mass walls. Those mass walls absorb that heat and at night lets it out, which is something I, that seems unreal to me when I first came here, but it's amazing. You can feel your wall on a winter evening giving off heat. So this is the greenhouse, which can be closed off to keep the house cool in the back, or it could be opened up to bring the heat into the house during the winter. So it's gonna be a little stuffy in the front part until we open everything up and then it's just like air conditioning. But the back of the house will be 70 degrees right now, no matter what. 
but we have all these ventilation windows. Earthship kind of breeze, you know, you, you go in on a hot day, you open this skylight, you open this up and let it swish through, you know. It's a working system. It's almost a living creature because it breathes, it heats, it cools, it does all these things. There we go. These are operable skylights and it's kind of a necessity in an airship. The air gets sucked through the house up and out of the skylight. That skylight's sucking the air out of this tube and, and the air gets cooled because it's going through a big berm of dirt. So by the time it comes out here, it's nice and cool. So this is our like kind of our passive air conditioning, which I think is one of the coolest inventions yet we've had. Earth stays at like a 55, 58 degree temperature. In the, in the winter, you know, oh, it's getting cold in here, we just shut it up. In the summer, we open it. But to tell you the truth, I bet you whoever lives here keeps it open in the winter a lot too, just because you get that fresh air. So this house, you know, in, in a lot of ways looks very conventional, so we're trying to show people that they, Urshus can look like any other kind of beautiful architectural house. People get scared about tires and cans, but we can build these houses where you'd never see a tire or a can, because we can cover them. There's tires under here, but we just plaster it over so it looks like your normal wall. So we get this huge, thick, thermal mass wall for free and just cover it with a colored cement. This is the house that, you know, your typical American could actually live in. They would be happy enough because there would be enough power, there would be enough water, everything. This is an appliance that costs more than a normal refrigerator, but because we're on a solar system running off batteries, we, have, we buy these super insulated uh, refrigerators that um, they don't use too much power. You can see how much insulation is around them. So the, the refrigerator is your most power consumptive appliance, so this is a really important piece of machinery to buy because it's gonna be running all night and it really can take a lot out of your batteries. Uh, we got bananas here, one fig tree. Here's a grape. This house, it does all these things to be a, a, an actually a working house. If you think about it, a conventional stick house needs heating, it needs electricity. You gotta put all these things in it to make it work. This just works. So this big pro panel roof is, is our water harvesting uh, element. So when it rains, all the water comes down to these gutters, goes into these tanks. They go through a few filter systems. First filter is this scupper, so a lot of the sediment will settle here and then it overflows into here. And the same thing fills up here and overflows, so your water's pretty clear by the time you get it. I mean, these look a little dirty, but they're actually, when this overflows, it's just, you know, pure clean water right there. Then it'll go through at least five or six different filters inside before you use it for washing your hands or shower. The, the water comes, you know, the, it'll rain, and then the, the roof catches the rainwater, and then we take a shower. That shower water gets filtered into our planter. At the end of the planter, it drops into a well. After you take a shower, your water is going to go through all these plants. And then right down here is a deep, deep well. Now, when I flush the toilet, this pump's going to go on because that's a gray water pump that is sucking up the gray water and it's going to put recycled gray water into the toilet. And then it's in this box so we can, you know, keep it a little quieter. That pump just sucked 1.6 gallons of recycled gray water out of this well into the toilet. So our toilet water has already been used twice, once for say a shower, once for the plants, and then the gray water pump puts it in the toilet and that's our third usage. It's not gross water really, because it goes through different kinds of filters. We have charcoal filters in the planter and the plants actually clean the gray water. So it really looks like normal toilet water, believe it or not. You know, a lot of people these days, they're really into humanure and composting toilets and all that stuff. And I've lived with a composting toilet before and I did not like it. It's just too hands-on, if you know what I mean. Our system does the same thing, but it's like a conventional, normal system. You never see it, smell it, anything. It goes from the toilet into a septic tank outside and then it overflows into a big rubber-lined exterior blackwater planter. 
And to me, that's a heck of a lot way to deal with your waste than mixing it up with peat moss and doing that whole process. We, we composted it in a way underground, away from everyone's sight and smell. And I think most Americans, you know, would appreciate that. What I've learned about living off grid and living off the rain, we get eight inches out here. It's hard to live off eight inches, but some people do it. But if you had 12 inches of rain, you could, any American could live off that. What does it cost to build a house like this? The globals are like 225 a square foot. Cheaper than a regular house? That's the same as a normal house. Okay. But you'll save money on the long, you know, every year you live in it, you save more and more money. But then if you build it yourself or you, you know, there's different ways to keep the price down too. Like my wife and I put a lot of sweat equity in our house. No, I think it's uh, 690 acres or oh, something. But that's oh, but that one area that's two acres was designated as the experimental zone. Okay. The rest of this, we have uh, normal, you know, permitting requirements. Uh, so did you have issues then with your own? No, because Taos County is pretty educated about what Mike does and the earth shift. So um, ours was just a, a design they were familiar with. And so it was no problem. You know, that's a, What's that noise? Don't tell me I have a flat tire, please. I think I do. What the heck? Oh, big hole. Okay, let me get home real quick. Come on. Where did I catch that? Oh, no. Oh, we'll get home. Is there an element of survival out here? No, this is... Well, you know, when I first came out here, there was only about 25 houses, and I, I'm from Los Angeles, and... I, I felt like, wow, I, I got to be in survival mode out here. You know, you start learning how to do everything yourself and, you know, you're at your friends a mile away and there's a giant snowstorm, you know, you, you got to get home. Just kind of, that was all new to me and fun. Yeah, this is my neighborhood. This is where my kids ride their bikes. It's just people that want to live off the grid and, and like the idea of earth ships, you know. It's almost like a, a Star Wars movie or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you my little house that I built. And uh, the first person that came and visited said it looked like Luke Skywalker's house. So this is my house right up here. See that little dome? That's our little house that we lived in for five years. The community was shut down as, and declared an illegal subdivision when we first came here, so we wanted to live here still, and so we built a structure that was the size of a storage unit. This will be good. All right. I'm working on the, en the front entrance, so it's a little a bit of a construction zone. Let's go to the front of it, yeah. We came out here without any building experience and just a lot of enthusiasm. This is the hut. In two months, my wife and I built that, got into it right before winter, and we had a nice little Earthship survival pod to live in while we built our dream house. So it's under 120 square feet, so Taos County didn't need a permit for it. How big is it? It's a 12 foot diameter, probably 14, 13 feet high. It's kind of a storage shed now. So yeah, we uh, had stairs. We had a king size bed up here with a TV. We had a couch right here and we had a cooking stove right here. And we had an outhouse in the back. And this building stays between 55 and 70 degrees. If we put a, a greenhouse in front of it, it would stay between 65 and, and 70 degrees. For $2,500, we got a little house that kept us warm in the winter without any outside costs or heating. And it collects water. And it was a way for us to learn about our ships and how to build them. My wife and I, our idea when we came out of here was like, man, if we could just build a tiny little house around our king size bed, we're gonna be happy. We'll be on our land, we'll have our own little house, we'll have no rent. 
We were really happy living in the hut. It was an amazing time. Uh, no mortgage, no bills, no kids at the time. You want to come in the house? Hey guys. This is the living room. We got a little tiny wood burning stove in there, but to tell you the truth, we use it maybe five times a year. It's really kind of unnecessary. These are all tire walls, all tires covered in adobe mud. So tires everywhere, all the walls are just tires. This is almost like our main battery of our house because in the winter, the winter sun comes and hits this. It absorbs that heat and then at night it releases it. Our walls are like our heating battery packs. It's just a free standing tire wall right here. Big heater. So just get warm while the sun's burning here? Well, our design is a, a design that gets warm in the summer a little bit, but because we have the sloped glass windows, these are designed to be perpendicular to the winter sun. In the summer, the sun's, instead of out here and shooting into the house, it's just shooting right down. So we do get some sun in the greenhouse, and so it does get a little warmer than the new Globals do. The new Globals have that isolated greenhouse that we don't have. <laughs> See, this is a 16-year-old design, so we used to live with the greenhouse, and then Mike realized if we separate the greenhouse from the living space, the living space is going to be a lot better temperature. Um, so it's, it's an older design that doesn't work as well as a global, but it works pretty darn well. This is an old design, but the new principle of Earthships is actually kind of shown here. Is like, this is my kid's room, and we can close it off from the front part of the house. So as a consequence, it's always a lot cooler in here. And the floor is an adobe floor, which I absolutely love. It just feels so good on your feet. It's just sand, adobe, and straw. That's an operable skylight. So you just open them up or close them according to temperature. And this house is halfway in the ground. We're like, this is about ground level right here. That's important. Well, you don't have to be sunk into the ground anymore. We used to think we did, but it helps. You can uh, build from the ground up and still be buried and still have all the same principles. It's still a good idea to dig them into the ground. It's kind of economical because the dirt that you excavate out of your house, you can use for your berm and things. I love the bikes, the hand bikes. Yeah. This is our master bedroom. It was our dream bedroom that we finally got done. What do we got here? So this bedroom has its own gray water system. And it has its own food. Yep. Does it? Yeah, we're, over there. Tell this is, yeah. What's that, X? Mint. mint. Wow. So yeah, we have mint and rosemary and then a papaya tree. This whole table was full of tomatoes about a week ago. But we still got the fig tree, the banana tree. And maintenance, pretty maintenance free, as you're saying. Yeah, I don't, yeah, don't have to water them. Okay, I'm gonna flush the toilet. So that's sucking the gray water out of the, the bottom of the planter down there. It's getting sucked into the toilet. Once the water goes through a series of baffles here, it drops into a well way deep. And then there's a hose down there, and when I flush the toilet, it senses that it needs, and it sucks up water and puts the gray water into the toilet. Then the black water system out here, have a really nice black water system. So all this lush green in here is part of my black water treatment containment cell. So after you take a number two in the toilet, it goes to the septic tank, and then it overflows into this huge 20 by 40 six foot deep hole that's rubber lined and there's gravel. And so all these plants, their roots are tapping down to all that sewage that's about four feet underground. You don't smell it, you don't see it, but what happens is you get beautiful landscaping and I never have to water any of this. We're out here on the harsh high mountain desert and I got willows which grow by rivers and I never water these things. They're just tapping into the black water sewage that's down four feet down. All this just comes up because there's water down below and the plants know it. Mike likes to call these plants uh, eaters and that's what they are. They're just eating up all the shit. 
I started with one tiny willow. And once it, its roots locked into the Blackwater system, the willows took over. So there's a huge root system now. So this is like a great visual example of what the water you sent down the toilet to the sewage system, like what yeah. you could be doing. Yeah. And this is the fourth use of this water. So all this, all this landscaping is just using this, the fourth use of water. And this is permitted. This is permitted, yeah. Because this is exactly like a traditional leach field. What most people do is the, the, after you flush the toilet, it goes to the septic tank. That septic tank usually overflows into a leach field, which just means a big hole, which also means that the sewage can get into the groundwater. Now, out here, the groundwater is 800 feet down, so we could probably get away with a traditional leach field, but we want to hold on to that water. That's why we line the leach field because we want that water, that water is valuable to us. So that water is, you know, translated into plants. I mean, you can actually see the water, the black water is about four feet down. It doesn't even smell by the time it gets here, you know? No, it doesn't smell at all. You know, in town, people have leach fields that are polluting a lot of groundwater as we speak. This is contained. This is only getting used by these plants. It's not getting into the ground. It's not polluting anything. To me, I don't see why every house, every building in the world can't have these lined sewage treatment planters that grow plants. Why not? We're treating our sewage here in Taos and then putting it back in the Rio Grande where everyone swims. Why can't every house have a 20 by 40 black water cell? I mean, it works. It's easy. It's cheap. And no maintenance. And no maintenance. I don't water this. But these weeds are actually treating sewage, you know? So they're actually a little useful. If you can put the time to put in a septic tank, then put the time to put in a 20 by 40, six foot deep hole, line it with EPDM rubber, and your sewage is treated for the rest of your life, you know? You don't have to do a thing. Hey, I need your car for a little bit because my car has a major flat. Yeah. I pay $300 a year in utilities. $300. I like that girl. She's funny. And that's $100 for the propane for my cooking stove and $200 for a water delivery. Seems like about once a year when it gets really dry out here, we need to get a, a delivery of water. And then when these ripen, my uh, Xavier just grabs, pulls these down and eats them right off the tree. Those are figs, yeah. Probably makes 200 figs a year. Wait, how much did you say a year the first time? 200? Every year. Too little, too little. And for me now, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine living in town with a heater in the middle of winter, sitting in a dark little house with small windows and heating elements, cooking the air. I just can't imagine living that way. I, I like this natural way of living here. In a solar house or a nurse ship, you want to get a special kind of refrigerator that doesn't absorb too much power because the refrigerator is the most power consumptive appliance you're going to have. So this one's built super insulated. It's also wired DC, so it doesn't have to use the inverter to charge it on an AC. So this refrigerator costs a little more than a normal refrigerator, but it's just a necessity when you're living off the grid to have one of these kinds of refrigerators. Really efficient. All right. My kids have been raised pounding tires. This is actually our bedroom that we were just in when we were building it. <laughs> They're also building their own house. So. They are? Yeah. There we have land at the other Ursha community, so I'm building a little house with my two sons and trying to teach them all the techniques so they can grow up knowing how to do it. It's a great thing for an individual to have these skills. Like, I feel like I can go anywhere in the world and build a house out of, you know, trash. It's kind of empowering. I know I can go anywhere and just start building with bottles, cans, tires, and, and I can build a structure for somebody. Back 20 years ago, you could come here, put $1,000 down on a piece of land, and start building that day. 
a lot of people are living here without a mortgage. They did it because of the way the system was back then. One reporter came and said, is this a cult out here? And we said, well, if it is, it's a tire pounding, beer drinking cult, and that's about it. <laughs> now, this is a big hole up here. This is our gravel pit reclamation project. It, they, they dug out a huge hole to build this highway, and it was abandoned, and now we're making a neighborhood out of it. So that's what this is here. These houses don't have the views and they're kind of sunken into the ground here, but they, they're, the land is cheap here. This is where our affordable housing is. Well, those are tiny little houses. I don't know, those are probably going for 50,000 or something. Yeah, they're just little one room studio apartments. This right here is the Packager ship. That's like the 2000, 2005 design. And the global kind of evolved from that. So those are what we call split levels. So that whole back row of the gravel pit is gonna be these two story split level houses. There's no real ideological community thing except for the, the bonding of the Earthship idea. It's really tough to build your own house. You gotta know what you're doing, or you just gotta be really brave. <laughs> those are the earlier designs, like my house, they're called the U Modular. So you can tell those are like early 90s houses. And then Mike got into making huts with the domes in around the late 90s. So that was the domes with the greenhouse in front. This is tough. How many homes are there out here? I think there must be about 70 now. It's growing steady. Yeah. During the financial crisis, we were one of the only places that was still building. Really? Yeah. Do you have any idea why? Well, I think people just, they kind of got scared and they're like, I'm going to get an off the grid house. So a lot of people just decided to take what money they had and, and come here and to keep it in tight. Well, these are called uh, the nest and it's just basically a studio apartment that does everything a normal house should do. It's just a small self-contained house that, uh, they used to be like $50,000 to build, and I think this one's for sale for $50,000, so. Well, once you start doing the work yourself, the, the cost really goes down. One thing about Mike is when I first came here, he was really big on the homeowner builder. He wanted to teach people how to build their own houses. It got him in a lot of trouble with lawsuits and stuff. A normal house has to be able to stay at 70 degrees all year round, and some of the earlier houses would get down to 65. So you couldn't defend it. We still encourage people to build their own houses, but we also got a little bit real. Sometimes it's just best for the company to build it instead of trying to get a client to build a house who doesn't really have the skills. This is the house that's designed to feed a family of four. There's more space dedicated to plants than there is to living area. The six principles that all Earthships incorporate is um, water harvesting, contained sewage, thermal mass, thermal cooling and heating, building with recycled and natural materials, solar and wind electricity, and the last one is food production. And that's the one we're really working hard at right now to, to really get in, to get going, is the food production aspect of it. Big jungles inside. This house was designed to feed a family of four. There's more space dedicated to plants in this house than there is to living space. We did have a tilapia pond going here. They're pretty shy, but we also got turtles and koi in here. But this is all with the idea of to trying to create protein, trying to create food for people. And this is all experimental. And we're just learning, you know? So we're learning a little bit every day. We got, uh, you know, grapes starting to go here everywhere. Grapes everywhere. 
All these buckets are growing vegetables. Oh, this is a bell pepper, I think, and uh, this is a way we, uh, we've we been experimenting to grow food is to keep them in the buckets with all this like gravel down there, and we feed them through this pipe, and so it's a way to to grow the vegetables um, in a self-contained container and, and use less water. The idea being the roots will come down and take up the water. So now it's going to be a lot cooler in the back part of the house. This is the second greenhouse here. This is like how all the houses are. There's, a, there's the original greenhouse and then there's the second part of the glass. But yeah, usually it's just all living space, but Mike put plants even in the living space. Really cool in here. Yeah. It's nice, huh? And this is all built out of tires and it does all the same things a normal Earthship does. So yeah, you can just graze on your, your house. How much effort is this watering? You know, you know what's amazing? I don't have to water it. The roots go down and absorb that, uh, that gray water on its own. So you water it a little bit to get it established, but then it, it locks into the system and you don't have to do anything. This house will take care of you. This house will feed you. Chickens. But this is part of trying to feed, you know, part of the food production thing we're doing, experimenting with. We are a highly experimental green building operation here. And we're always pushing the envelope, we're always getting better. If you can tell, each house is a little different because Mike will never do the same design twice, but this was the first solar survival. I, I know the interns are all moving out today because we're getting new interns on Monday. Hello. This is a two bedroom one. It's to house students here. Good thing I just cleaned up. <laughs> is it nice in there? Can we take a look? My room, sure. <laughs> I don't know about Mike's. This one, the planter's uh, more mature. Mm -hmm. so, so we got some fig trees starting to grow. Those will produce about 200 figs a year. We've got a banana tree. Bananas at 7,000 feet. This is currently where I've been staying for the past two weeks. Nice. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How did, how'd that house perform? Pretty good. The only thing I kind of had to get used to, whenever I turn to my side, I look right out the window and I see this huge banana tree out right there. <laughs> this is Wolf. He's one of our students. Did you learn how to build an earth ship? Yes, I did. I plan to build one very soon. Greatly. Where? Uh, possibly uh, in Utah, but I know another academy student who's going to come back here to Taos to build uh, an earthship for his girlfriend's father, mm -hmm. and I'll help him with that. But getting permits, is that an issue? Tom, do you know? We're working on that right now. Yeah. We've got the land, we've got the funds, we just need the permission. Mm. You know, I always tell the students, you know, if you could find someone in the county where you can make them feel like they're progressive by uh, accepting this, that might be a better technique than kind of getting in their face and saying, you got to do this. But you know, some people, you know, it could be good for their reputations to be progressive and accept this kind of building. Everybody wants the new phone. Everyone wants the new iPod or the new car. Why can't they want the next house? Airships are the future. <laughs> no utility bills. The airship takes care of yourself. Grow your own food. Not only are we in New Mexico, which is far away from everything, Taos County, far away, Taos, tiny little town, but then we're 20 minutes outside of town out on the high desert mesa, and it's amazing how many people from around the world come here because they're interested in our, the technology we got going here.
that's what we hope with the Earthship Academy is that we, we send out this army of knowledgeable students and we're hoping that someone will do something like this in another country and it'll take off. So that's what the Earthship Army is all about. <laughs>